Hello. Real quick, sorry for the lack of videos. I have was in the process of moving and I have now moved into a much more friendlier recording room where I don't have to worry about neighbors who can hear me and the walls are much thicker. So hopefully there won't be so many reflections. Today we're going to talk about sidechain and while this is a massively over covered topic, there's just some things I want to point out in Bitwig that people may not have noticed before. Okay, so here we lie, ready to test out this thing. So essentially, I'm going to be making an auto trigger for my drums, which sound like this. And so nothing special, so just really simple. Uh, the way this has to work um, is you have to basically have a drum machine channel, and you you keep all the percussion that you would ever want to be sidechained in the mix on this in this channel and then you do any other percussion that you don't want to be sidechained in a different drum channel and then like i guess if you want maybe a third one for the stuff you want sidechained like uh for example i'm sidechaining this that's getting like sidechained Yeah, so the way this works is we take a poly synth. So I usually make a trigger, it goes like this. I'm not going to play it because it's bad for your ears. But <clears throat> essentially, what we have is white noise only because it's on a mix and the white noise is at max, meaning that the, the volume of the saw wave is like gone and there's nothing going on and all the decays are off. This doesn't even like matter. <laughs> And then it goes into a compressor where the attacks are basically focused on and then volume raised and then they get ceiling to make sure that it stays at zero like that. And then what we do in the auto trigger is the exact same thing. Let me, I'll copy and paste for dramatic effect. Dramatic effect achieved. So now we have two of the exact same channel. So when I play it, it's going to do exactly what it was. If you're really interested in hearing it, this is what it sounds like. And it's at 10 right now because this track's at 10 and the peak limiter is relevant to the output of the track. So now what we do is we go into the note effects and we're going to add a note receiver like this one here. And we make our source, say our main, right? Okay, and now we could put this nonsense here in the effects section, and then we can go ahead and save this as a, like, trigger. Maybe auto trigger. So it pops up up front. Uh-huh. So now we have auto trigger, and we can find it if we ever open Serum, and then click on my own presets and it's here or type it in. So now let's un unsend this anywhere. So it makes no sound. So now what we'll actually do is react to the drums. And if I play drums, you can see it's following exactly what's going on here. So it's getting its MIDI input from this note effects, as you can see here. What's cool though, is we can still use this um, standalone if we turn this off. So if there's ever a point where we wanna use the standalone, we could just turn off the note receiver and do it like that, or uh, not mute input and it would still work actually. So, and then you can mute source, which means that the kick won't do anything now. So that's what that does. So whatever you want, essentially. So now we have an auto trigger. So if we put this up to zero, it's going to do exactly what, what this one was doing because they're the exact same. The only difference is this one's being triggered by this. So that's like done. And then you never have to do anything. So like, I'll just delete that. And now I have a trigger. Use it as a track separator, maybe if I want. Get some space between me and the drums. And nothing's being sidechained now, so we can go through and select it here as our as our thing. 
everywhere. And then we'll see that works. And as you can see, now our side chain is working just as before. But now, because what I'd have to do before is I would have my second track for this trigger. And then I would just like copy and paste or like say I was doing some sort of like dubstep and I just had like this pattern going on or something like then I would go like that and then hold alt and then drag it on like that. And while that works fine, if you want to like get into detail or something and like add kicks everywhere and stuff, then it gets a little annoying if things get layered on top of each other, or maybe you have hi hats and stuff in here and you have to grab just these two tracks and it's a pain. So now with this, we have achieved a responsive, totally automatable and manually controlled trigger, which is quite nice because I can play notes whenever I want if I have that feature on in my in my device. So quite simple, it's just a note receiver and you use it to trigger the polysynth's technically non-existent sound that is captured by your side chains. Let's get even fancier now. So now that we know we can make a smart side chain trigger, what we can do is then add a note filter. So C1 is 36 semitones above like the lowest offered semitones. And so we can we can use this now because we see here in our MIDI that we have a C1 and a C sharp one. So that means if we go to our auto trigger that we would have 36 and then the highest is 38. So now we've basically told it to only accept input from, sorry, 36 and 37, meaning that it will only take from C1 and then C sharp one. So what's cool about that is now I have all this extra chunk over here. What I can do is go ahead and recombine everything. I have recombined all my layers and I have moved my snare trigger from the side chained portion which is no longer sidechained per se, because you cannot send the MIDI from one track to another and then have any sort of input come back to the track because that would suggest like feedback loops and most DAWs just don't allow you to do that because it's like a technical error and like why would you because there's different ways to do that. But uh, if I wanted to do sidechain, I suppose I could just set up another trigger inside of the main track that responds to the auto trigger. So if I wanted, say, to sidechain now my my stuff in here. Say I want to sidechain that. Now I will use tool. Mm -hmm. Drop it down. It's, it's quite enough to the point where sidechain is a thing. And then now what we do is we go into our modulators and get the audio sidechain, open it. And now we're going to use this to sidechain our, our stuff because we can take the, let's see here, the instrument layer chains and take the drum machine post audio like this. So now, the the side now this stuff will basically dodge anything that's in the regular these three things will get dodged by by this the thing being though this tool needs to be inside the side chain layer like that now we will go ahead and modulate say the amplitude by it though i believe that will be wrong. So at zero, and then we would go down. So when the audio reaches, the higher the audio that it receives gets, the more we want this to be done. Okay. 
And what we can do is make it extremely gained in in the mind of the audio signal. So it comes like hard in and then we can change the like amount and release times. And maybe target only the low end. So now we've kind of got our sidechain effect in here, though it's on a lower quality, uh, which is kind of what happens when you use audio sidechain. Audio sidechain is very good for making reverbs duck out of the way of leads and such. Not so much like having a bunch, multiple things duck out of the way, but I'm treating these, these things as sort of like not so serious, so it's not a huge deal. Um, let's... Go ahead and, okay, maybe do a little less. And then now if we listen. So now as we can see the source is from main which is actually our drum group here. So it's ignoring everything that isn't this and this. Which got a low volume for some reason. So anything that does not those two is ignored and I can change these parameters at any time add one now this is affected when I play it that will get affected I could just remove the range and have everything side chain everything but obviously you don't want to do that or else you wouldn't put the note receiver or the note filter to filter out what the receiver picks up so now you've made the smartest side chain that only picks up kicks and snares, and if you don't want it to be picked up, then essentially you can just mute the trigger track with automation, and then now you never have to, like, put down, waste your time putting down tracks. I'm going to go ahead and save this as smart auto trigger, or auto trigger smart. And that's what I have. So I showed you a little bit uh, how, in sight of how to sidechain with the audio sidechain, basically using tool or you could use filters, for example, like use like low pass filters or something to take away reverb when something else plays or you can do that sort of thing or have it so you can put this on chords or anything. And when the audio stops playing, uh, it closes like any filter or changes another thing like maybe makes the reverb louder when you stop playing to sort of simulate compression like o ott or something uh you can make like vocodexes and stuff with this as well vocoders i mean and yeah so we made uh auto side chain the basics or an auto trigger and then we made a smart trigger so now your percussion stuff should be so simple the thing you have to make sure is that the percussion things that are going to be per side chained need to be all side by side you, like if i were to put the snare up at c sharp 2 uh, i can no longer actually filter that out i might be able to run and i believe in that sort of case you would then have to run the note splitter through a instrument layer no through a uh, fx layer that I can't, maybe an instrument layer, and then I think you could target specific. Let's try this. Because we have, we have two now. K 
Okay, so now I, don't, I think the filter doesn't work and it just passes straight through. So yes, uh, as it is, come on. Well, as it is right now, you have to have the percussion layered side by side in the same receiving end. And you can only have one note receiver uh, on, a on a track, so you might, what you could do is make multiple triggers and put them in a group and then use the group as your output. And then that way you could be way more specific with what ranges you want to select because you're basically going to need to make this setup for each, for each input. So if you were to do your drums and have like, here, I want these two to be side chained, then I want like a sharp one and then the B one to be side chained. I would basically need to duplicate this, come in here and change my range and then use the group's master output as the trigger signal now, not just the track itself. So then you have two separate sources. Yeah, that's it. So thank you for watching. I'm going to try to make a video every day, uh, or every other day as much as possible. I have many hours I need to be done at school for things related to sound design, so I'm going to try to use YouTube for that. Um, such as like recording and editing and processing dialogue and making content because this is a minor job. So uh, this is like a real real world thing that I can use for that. So I'm going to take advantage of that to really force myself to make videos. And like I said, I have a better environment for recording where I feel much more comfortable. And this recording process today even was extremely smooth with minimal cuts being made which is very unusual because usually I stutter or lose my train of thought because like I can hear my neighbor speaking or something and it's very frustrating. So this should be the start of more tutorials, hopefully. Um, so if all goes well, I will see you maybe not tomorrow, but Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday, and then I will start doing what I can. There's going to be a few Sundays where I'm unavailable and Mondays and Tuesdays, I still have lectures that I need to go travel to, so we'll see how that goes. But I have five days a week now that I have completely free, so assuming I'm not doing anything on those days, I should be able to make video each day or the other day. Thank you for watching.